These are the materials required for the built. There's this side, all these equipment are for the built itself. And these are for the uh, growing medium. Um, for the actual built, you're gonna need three of these 10 foot, four inch PVCs. Now my local hardware store has these type of PVC you see at the very end here. It's enlarged. Well, I'm gonna have to cut that off. And so that's really not go going to be 10, 10 foot. You need a two inch, 10 feet PVC schedule 40. You also need a half inch, 10 feet schedule 40 PVC. You need three of these four inch tees, four of the uh, 90 degree elbow, uh, four inch PVC adapters. You need five of these caps. You need four of these uh, drain covers. Four of this half inch end caps. Four of the half inch 90 degree elbow. These are optional. Um, these are the shut shut off valve. For uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna hook these to the um, to each individual uh, feeder pipe. And uh, if I need to do any kind of maintenance, I can individually shut them off so that way I don't have to shut off the whole system at once. So these could come in handy. Um, here are the stuff that you can get on Amazon for uh, uh, all the growing. You will need a uh, two inch netted pot. These are the coconut core for starting your seeds. This is the liquid plant food that you're gonna be mixing into your water solution. And finally, just a, uh, a water pump that's gonna pump the uh, half inch PVC pipe, your feeder pipe um, to all the pots. So um, yeah, if you, divide, if you divide these two separately, it's not as intimidating. Get these parts, you can get these parts at your local warehouse and then you can order these stuff uh, on Amazon. Oh, one thing I didn't mention, um, I haven't gotten it yet, is a five-way split half-inch PVC. Um, at the very top, we're gonna have to hook up a five-way PVC, uh, half-inch PVC to the feeder. And I'll show you guys what it looks like once it gets here. I don't have that part yet, and it should arrive here tomorrow. But today, I can go ahead and start cutting these pipes down. Um, cutting the uh, two inch PVC pipe. I'm gonna cut a uh, section off about a foot or so for uh, the guy to make the holes. And I'm gonna cut rings. Um, and you guys will see that in a later part of the video why we're gonna need the rings. We need some really nice things. We need some really big rings. I got a really big... And this is what you would need to start. So we could go ahead and start building. First step is to cut these 10 foot PVC pipes in half. So let's go ahead and do that. Since I can't keep the end of this, I'm gonna have to measure it out. Uh, I think I'm gonna be safe and cut it at one 116 inches. That's about nine feet and eight inches right there. If you can find the 10 foot, four inch PVC without this end, that'd be great. You don't have to do this. You just measure it and cut it in half. But because I can't keep this portion, I have to cut it and kind of discard it, I guess. Now that we got the ends cut out, some of you guys may not even have to do this step. It's just an extra step, uh, but for me, we have to do it. So let's measure it now. It should come out to about 116. 116. 116 divided by two, 58. 58 inches is just two inches. Two inches from being five feet.
Okay, four pieces for the main four towers. Ready to go. This next step is to decide how large you want the uh, base to be. Uh, the base also serves as your reservoir. So uh, the bigger the base, the more sturdy, uh, the more secure it will be. The smaller base is gonna hold less water and it's not gonna be as stable. So you decide, um, depending on the space that you have, how big uh, or small you're gonna want this to be. Uh, for me, I think cutting this 10 foot PVC uh, into sections of about seven inches uh, looks good. But uh, I'll put it together and you guys can see uh, what it looks like. All right, so now we're gonna cut the, uh, the sections, the D sections, the connector sections. Those, 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 those. So one, two, three, four, five, six, six, seven inch sections. And now we gotta cut this half inch uh, feeder pipe that goes into the uh, metal tube slightly higher than all of these towers. So I measured it, these are 58. Um, we're gonna cut about 65 inches uh, of this. This is the five way that came today in a packet of two, $6 on Amazon. Um, so I just put it in the, uh, in the feeder tube and I'm gonna measure from the feeder to the top of this um, tower. And here I have the extra four inch PVC that I cut three pot holes into. One, two, three. And uh, each one has a different style. Uh, here's the rounded one. Here's the more uh, jagged uh, one. Uh, these two inch rings, they'll sit really snug on there. And the pots will sit in there like that. Um, the only thing that I found out is gonna be an issue. I cannot sit all three of these pots down into the tubes um, because they're hitting each other. The roots is gonna touch each other. It's gonna be too crowded. So what I decided to do is instead of doing three, I'm just gonna do two, one on each side. So I'm just gonna make uh, one pot holes on each side, right on the opposite side, and then we'll stagger them, and then one on opposite of each uh, side of that. So, so uh, I want it to have more room uh, for its root to grow and absorb the uh, nutrients. 
So I'm just gonna get do the two sides. So I'm gonna mark everything in red so you guys can see. Uh, I'm gonna leave six inches from the top to accommodate the cap. And then we have the feeding tube that's, that's gonna go down a little bit on that. <clears throat> so six inches. I'm just gonna use all these uh, red texts as uh, the straight guide. Um, so I'm gonna go one, two, three, four, five, six. I'm gonna start right here. This is my first cut right here. And then I'm gonna use this, um, it'd be, like I said, real useful to have these flexible uh, uh, measuring tape right here. Just gonna tape that. So we're gonna do six of them. So we're gonna go eight. 16, 24, 32, and 40. So that's one, two, three, four, five, and six. I have six markings for six potholes. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then on the complete opposite side of that, it's gonna be one, two, three, four, five, six. Now, I'm gonna stagger the, um, the, uh, the other rows. So it's gonna sit right between the first two rows. So because we left six inches from the top, and then between these two marking or four inches, it's gonna be six inch plus four inch for a total of 10 inches. So that's where I'm gonna make the first mark for my staggered row. So 10 inches down. Right, yeah. This is gonna be my first. And after we uh, finish marking the row that is staggered, we're gonna go exactly the opposite of that again. Then you can make a template that's three inches long, and then you can trace it over those dots. Six already marked, one, two, three, four, five, six. We're gonna go directly up to the opposite side, right here. Put six lines. And these are just guidelines. When you go and cut with the cut stop, it's not gonna line up evenly with your with the line drawn on here. It, it'll be close, but it's not gonna be exact. So the, uh, the stop is what's gonna make everything even. Okay, and to make the pothole, you will need some sort of heat. Uh, in, in my case, I'm gonna be using the uh, heat gun. Some people use like a blowtorch, uh, which isn't really a good idea because that could burn this and, and brown it. This is the uh, guide for me to get my um, the potholes exactly the same length or the same width as my uh, netted pot. So, um, you, you can use bottles. Some people use bottles. 
some people use any kind of object that could you know get them to the uh, two inch hole that they need but this is probably the easiest way to do it okay so i'll show you guys how to do the first one much it and it's already hard if you want to move very quickly you may just need a uh, uh, some sort of like uh, towel some wet towel with cool water that will cool it you know very rapidly um, so yeah I think I'm gonna go ahead and do that that these rings fit from time to time so that way you don't have to um, recut them if needed. So here we have some tear on the end of the holes here. Um, I think what happened was I was trying to move fast, so fast. And so on my heat gun, the settings, I turned it all the way to max. So this heat gun let you adjust the temperature by dialing the knob here. I think I had it on max and uh, I was moving so fast and uh, it basically made rips on here and what i noticed is that um, when you just dial it back um, do about 70 60 to 70 percent of the heat coming out of here and uh, you'll get results like this here where there's no tear um, yeah it, it'll take a little bit longer but it's it's more worth it um, you don't get you don't get the tear like you do here. So um, just keep in mind to move nice and slow. And if you guys want, I'll put a link to this heat gun in the, uh, in the description below. I'm um, gonna insert this section here into the cap. And then what we're gonna do, have one of these end caps on there. And then we're gonna drill some holes right here so the water will come out like a spray. And this will go on top of the tower.
I'm choosing this corner of the uh, backyard deck right here. So um, this is where I get a lot of sun. Um, and then in the afternoon, the sun kind of sets over there and we got some shade so it won't be too harsh and I think it's a good place and before you put the tower on use these uh, shower strainers to um, catch any kind of debris that would fall into the uh, um, to the pipes Back here where the uh, where the pop goes, I just use some tin snips and just cut this opening. And now the cap can just go over like that, and then we still got the uh, the power, and this is stable. This is a uh, two gallon bucket, so we'll see how many it will need to fill it up. Here I have 24 rings and I will fit them. Um, all the other towers already has rings on them. I'm just gonna uh, put them on this last one here. All right, guys, this is all done. I just put on the last ring and they all have rings on them now. I'm gonna turn it on and see how that goes. Okay, you hear the pump. Here we go. Here we go. Water. Alright, it's working. See this? Okay guys, so overall I have this running for about 10 to 15 minutes now. And these two uh, towers in the front doesn't seem to have any problem, but back here I have a little bit of a uh, leak and I don't know where it's coming from. Maybe it just looks like it's just splash. So maybe if I have the um, the potted plant in there, it's not, it's, it, it, it'll prevent it from leaking. But this one I have to find out where it's actually leaking from and then maybe 
I think I think maybe some somewhere over here like that. Or maybe something like this I have to glue with silicone. But very minimal leak. Not a problem. We could fix that easily. Uh, but overall, looks good. Water's running strong. Here and here. All right, and uh, I'm gonna put in a couple of potted plants that I have grown. These are the nutrient solution that you get on Amazon. And this is designed for hydroponics. So uh, I'm gonna follow the instructions and uh, add the appropriate amount to the water reservoir. Okay, so this is calling for 16 milliliters at the startup and second feeding for a 12 pot arrow garden. And I have almost a hundred pots here. So this can't be right. Um, for outdoor gardens, four milliliter per gallon each watering. So Okay, so I'm only gonna start planting on this tower. The other tower, luckily I have these shut off valves I can shut off because I don't have any plants for them yet. And uh, I've only grown enough, not even enough. This is 24 uh, pots and I don't even have enough for that. So I'm gonna start just uh, experimenting to grow on the first, the first tower. Um, and then see how that goes and then as I as I germinate other seeds and uh, for more plants then I will start filling up the other ones and turning these nozzles up so that's good I put these nozzles in so that way I don't have to have all the towers going all at once here are the 50 pack 2 inch diameter uh, netted pots so I'll have a link in the description below you guys can check that out. Okay, a couple of things to keep in mind. There's water coming out of these side holes because it's not completely sealed. Uh, now, if you don't mind having to refill this like every day, every other day, then you can leave it, but it bothers me. So what I did here, um, I put some silicone on all of the sides. All of the sides here. So if I go and turn this one on, There's no water leakage. There's no water leakage. There might be one or two drop that's coming out of here, but that's because there's no pot inside of it now, but there's no water coming out the side. So if you want to do that, I suggest using some silicone. This is the silicone that I use, uh, American Sealant Ink. And this is um, for outside mildew resistant all of that good stuff you guys can check it out here and also this product is acceptable as a sealant on surfaces with incidental food contact so uh it's as safe as it gets probably not a hundred percent food grade but and i'll put a link for this product in the description below and you guys can go check out all the specs don't take my word for it. Make your own decision whether you want to use this or not. That's up to you.